so the next trick is me again. So uh, this time, uh, I'm going to show you the effect of uh, chrome on physical properties of aluminum, uh, copper aluminum oxide to nanoparticles. This is another study we did uh, before COVID-19. So uh, many things passed, and we will try to understand what we did after the COVID. So we are now ready to improve the elements. Uh, I'm going to show you a background, crystal structure definition, synthesizing method, configuration, and we have XRD, SCM, PPMS, and of this is all I'm going to uh, give you. So, why interest? So, uh, this is actually, I got some pictures from the internet, just to tell you that this kind of uh, unit materials are very important for semiconductor technology. So we have in semiconductor technology some n types elements. So uh, n types elements we use much, but the p types has to be improved. So it's a kind of p type feature. The crystal structure of uh, copper chromium oxygen two. This is a low side, uh, a dead oxide. It's in the group of the uh, system having an anti-ferromagnetic triangular subplates, and this three valent uh, cation system possesses the space group of R uh, minus three m in hexagonal settings. What we did here, we calculate the lattice parameter. We find it like uh, two point ninety seven angstrom, seventeen point eleven angstrom. So. Uh, uh, in synthesizing part, we just use these chemicals, copper 2 and uh, chrome 2 oxygen 3 chemicals. We provide, provide it from sigma aldehydes. We use the re uh, redox uh, reaction uh, given uh, right here. So, what we did, the mixture was entered in the furnace by increasing the final temperature to 900 degrees centigrade for 2.5 years. Then the furnace was switched off for self cooling to the room temperature. Uh, the sample was uh, taken out and created by an, uh, by an agate mortar and sintered for the second time by increasing the temperature 4 centigrade degree per minute. Then the sample was kept at the final temperature of uh, uh, 1100 degree centigrade for 3 hours and taken out the sample after self cooling to the room temperature. Uh, <coughs> this is actually uh, what we did uh, first, this kind of samples are sensitive to temperature, sensitive to uh, pressure effect. So we just make the samples and separate it uh, into three parts. The, them sample S1, S2, and S3 are the same things, but only different things is the pressure what we apply. So here, you see S1 is applied 10 tons, S2 is 15 tons, S3 is 20 tons. So uh, as XRD, <coughs> you see on the figures, uh, almost we haven't seen any very important uh, variation in XRD things. Almost everything is the same. So uh, what we have to do is we have to use some other tools to understand the effect of pressure, if it has. All right. Uh, for the reason before, you know, XRD, we couldn't find many difference. We just uh, got one of them to uh, uh, make with belt analysis. As you see here, the, uh, the curve given by the blue color is a difference. Uh, there is no almost difference between calculated and observed. So this is uh, it means that uh, the pattern is very uh, match well. So the structure is uh, studied, and you know it is almost a, a pure sample. We got <coughs> the SAM image of the copper chrome oxygen too. You see on the figures, uh, both uh, at the left hand side here, right hand side, and the down bottom here. So uh, these, are, uh, these are all given us S1, S2, and S3 samples. Uh, and also, we conducted uh, EDX measurement of the samples. Uh, the SM and macro images in 5 macro and macro, uh, micrometer, or micrometer, and 50. 500 nanometer magnifications figure out the ground rule behavior of the S1, S2, and S3 samples. As seen in all magnifications uh, on the SEM image, no melting was found, and thus the annealing temperature of the samples were optimized. If it is, <coughs> you uh, know, uh, if we increase the temperature, so if we get some melting, so we uh, do not get the desired result in uh, magnetic and in optic properties. This is actually magnetic properties of the system. Uh, we have 
uh, some, you know, curves, uh, magnetic field dependent magnetic moment. So taken 10 Kelvin, 50 Kelvin, 100, 150 Kelvin, 220 Kelvin, 300 Kelvin, 400 Kelvin. What we have here, just, you know, 10 Kelvin and 50 Kelvin are different. You see the, the coercive field, as you see here in the inside picture. The rest of it is almost uh, turning itself to paramagnetic behavior. Uh, <coughs> as in the figure, uh, expect the, at 10 Kelvin, uh, 50 Kelvin, all samples above 100 Kelvin show anti-paramagnetic behavior. In the Deluxe slide structure, e uh, each linear coordination uh, co uh, coordinated by copper uh, by two oxygen atoms forming oxygen, copper oxygen structure that is parallel to the C axis. This is the form of a layered uh, triangular structure. Antiparamagnet and oxygen in the oxygen, copper oxygen structure are each coordinated by three copper atoms parallel to the AB plane. So, uh, let me go back here. Okay. So, due to the gradient structure of the samples, magnetic behavior, behavior slightly to uh, uh, super paramagnetic behavior. This should be reason of the pressure effect of each sample. Uh, the pressure effect much clearly seen in the, fi in the, in the figure, which depicts the temperature dependent moments behavior. This is, these three are temperature dependent moment uh, behaviors uh, of the S1, S2, and S3 samples. Each grain has a net magnetic moment such that in a plane, the spins are antiferromagnetic oriented while they have a magnetic moment component perpendicular to the plane. Uh, therefore, each grain should be considered such a weak uh, magnet. So here, uh, we have uh, we have studied, we just got one of the samples to understand it is optical properties, how it changes, uh, you, you, you know, uh, by an eating temperature. Uh, right here, that is 3R, 1R, 5R, 1R, 5R, and 1R. You see, we just, you know, uh, got the full grad half max to middle of the uh, 0, 1, 2 peak. Also, uh, we calculated the optical band cap here. You see, the optical band cap is changing like 3.83 to 3.99. This is a kind of a gap. So it means that we can easily uh, arrange the back band cap uh, using a uh, different, uh, you know, uh, anionic condition. As a result, uh, null particles have been synthesized using actual redox reaction. Uh, stock and magnetic and optical properties were studied. The XRD results show that the produced copper, chromium, oxygen, nanoparticles particles were uh, composed of the uh, Rehom Bedel phase with a very good crystallinity. In order to produce small size particles with not of size distribution, we have investigated the effect of annealing temperature, time and duration, and the uh, uh, metallic ion concentration in the precursor solution. Also, uh, here, <coughs> uh, expect the measurements at 10 and 50 Kelvin, all samples above 100 Kelvin shows and the paramagnetic behavior. This was actually a preliminary study. This is because it's actually an ongoing study. It means that after we optimize the system, we are going to make some device uh, with this powder by adding some different chemicals. Well, thank you so much for this. Thank you for the talk. Is there any question for the speaker? Yeah, sure. Could you open the, the graph? There is uh, the. Yeah, no, like. Uh, one more. Uh, this one. Yeah. Uh, could you uh, explain the axis and the, the. I mean, there is some negative uh, part of it. Yeah, yeah. There is moving to the particle. I mean, uh, why is it. Um, just the physical meaning of the axis. Okay, okay. the physical meaning of the axis. We see the, the moving to the negative part, like the, it, it knows that it's a, a saturation. You will see just uh, this one. There's no saturation. Is it uh, positive? Is it? Uh, no, no saturation here. Uh -huh. No saturation here. And this part, we have a move to the negative part, means this antiferromagnetic. Uh -huh. yes. uh -huh. yeah. If we have a saturation here, it is ferromagnetic. 
uh, the echoes quite like this. This is not a kind of uh, actual uh, electromagnetic drive. It's a kind of anti-electromagnetic drive due to no saturation and the, the system is moving to the left side. The gap is, uh, you know, moving to the left side. To just short uh, appreciation, maybe the vertical axis is in mogram, right? Yes. Yeah, then notice that the, the small values, yeah, uh -huh. right, compared to for a magnet which are three orders magnitude uh, bigger, probably. Right. Any other question? If not, uh, let's thank uh, the speaker again, and with him, we conclude the session. Thank you. I don't have another one. Yeah.